When it comes to electronic toys for kids, one name springs to mind. VTech. It's a company which popped up 43 years ago, and almost immediately started competing against the big boys, or at least, attempting to. VTech, standing for Video Technology, began with a Pong console. In the UK, it was imported and distributed by Grandstand. It wasn't revolutionary, but sold enough units to allow VTech to produce a multi-game LED handheld system, quickly moving into the world of LCD games and directly competing with Nintendo, including such delights as their Tri-Screen Time and Fun series. That's right, a whole screen more than Nintendo's basic Game & Watch series. Before 1981, they had launched both a game console, the Creator Vision, and their first electronic learning product, the Lesson One. A tabletop version swiftly followed and was imported by companies again such as Grandstand to Western regions. It only offered simple spelling and number tasks, but for many of us, machines like this were our first taste of the hugely exciting world of computing. VTech would go on to release typing training aids, a home computer line, and numerous follow-up game consoles, and would quickly grow to a size which allowed them to enter domestic markets themselves rather than relying on importers. But perhaps their most successful products were those aimed at youngsters. Enter the correct sign. So I want to concentrate on their computer range aimed at these little whippersnappers because they have always fascinated me. I mean, do they really qualify as computers? VTech would produce a lot of variations aimed at various regions and age ranges through the 80s, 90s and noughties. Some in laptop form, some in desktop form, with a few offering pretty advanced capabilities, but ultimately they're all designed to offer a stepping stone up to the real deal. I've got a load of them here, and I thought we could spend the next 20 minutes looking at some of the best, and the features which really cause them to stand out, because, well, they're not just crappy toys. Although looking at some of them, you'd be forgiven for thinking they were. One, two. Ah, batteries. The further you go back in time, the bigger they were and the more you needed. Just like punks. This is the VTech Smart Start. A little LED screen device from 1988 aimed at 5 to 8 year olds and featuring a variety of educational games. Addition, multiplication, memorise the sequence, but my favourite thing about it is the fake disk drive. Even at this stage, VTEC wanted these machines to resemble the real deal, and of course they did. Little Dwayne wanted a computer that looked the same as his mum's at work. But it's basic. What we need is a computer which actually has basic. That's where the Pre-Computer 1000 comes in. Launched in 1989 and aimed at ages 9 and over, this little beauty featured all sorts of entertainment on its single row LCD display. This was a machine specifically designed to bring kids into the world of computers using edutainment as its selling card. Externally, it doesn't really look like it's trying to be anything other than its own thing, especially with this built-in handle. At this point in time, real laptops were relatively unheard of, especially in the domestic setting, and so there was no point trying to make it look like one. It's the full QWERTY keyboard which really sold it, and made it appear like a serious machine. Centre stage are the numerous questions on history, geography, science and general knowledge. There's also a typing course, calculator and some other games. And if you want, you can slam a cartridge in to get additional content. There was a few of these additional quiz question cartridges. But the best thing is the built-in basic interpreter. You can either select from one of the nine built-in programs or start from scratch. 
it's pretty limited, I mean we're talking a single row display, but a flick through the manual reveals all the essentials, input requests, truth tables, variables, arrays, pretty feature packed for such a limited device. An internal peek reveals that actually it's not too dissimilar from your average 8-bit home micro. Running the show is a Zilog Z84 which is really a CMOS based Z80, whereas the version you'd find in say a ZX Spectrum is NMOS based. This one runs at 4MHz but later VTEC machines would ramp it up to a whopping 6MHz. There's 16 kilobytes of onboard RAM and a whopping 1 megabyte of firmware stored in this TC5 mask ROM. We've got components here which can do a lot more than the dot matrix output suggests, and this hardware would serve many VTEC machines going forward, albeit with a few tweaks. One of those being the Precomputer 2000 in 1992, which stepped up the game, well from an external perspective at least. This thing is now attempting to resemble a proper laptop, albeit with a fake hinge which doesn't close, but it does have a pullout handle on the top. The real party trick however is the dual row display, and a souped up version of BASIC called PC BASIC, or Precomputer BASIC. Now I remember creating a pretty fancy database application on this back in the day using array and input statements. You can only save one program into memory but it's good for dabbling in the language and really understanding how computers work. The 2000 also features numerous quizzes, typing games, a cartridge slot and of course the all important wobbly keyboard sitting on top of its membrane. I quite like the touch of a constant sand timer just printed on the case, I guess they wanted to make it feel like Windows. The Big Daddy to the 2000 is really the pre-computer think book. Think book, that sounds familiar, nah, probably just a coincidence. It seems like VTech like to update their lines by adding more plastic. It's essentially identical to the Precomputer 2000 but with a proper hinge. It's like having a Nintendo 3DS instead of a 2DS. It also has a much nicer keyboard than its predecessors. Seriously, this is still membrane based but we've got nicer rubber dome switches underneath, improved mouldings and generally tighter housing. It's not half bad for a toy, it kind of feels like a Spectrum Plus 2. VTech likes to recycle and so this pre-computer concept would find its way into various shells including the pre-computer graduate, again pretty much the same but now with a snazzier aesthetic. Check out that bezel. I mean it's trying very hard to look like a Windows based GUI, although that 3D effect from the window to the LCD screen is it's, it's a bit weird isn't it, it's kind of breaking perspective. But I am a fan of these fancy icons at the top of the, again, otherwise two row LCD panel. This is like peak gooey imitation crappiness. I love it. Now running almost parallel to this range was another pre-computer range, but this one had a slightly different feature set and a bigger LCD screen, but it also lacks basic, making it a bit puerile in comparison. Activity. Here's the pre-computer notebook from 1993. It's got crazy things like a music maker, if you can call it that, and an animation maker. I'm not even sure I can be bothered to explain this properly, but you can arrange about four different images in a sequence to create an animation. Press the numbers to create a moving cartoon. The pre-computer notebook 2 is a slight advancement on the first. What do you want? I mean it's got a 3.5mm headphone jack on the side, but good god, why would you want to listen to this through headphones, you'd break your brain. Clearly it's just there to appease parents who couldn't bear the horrifically bone shattering sounds from the first model. 
These notebooks might have bigger, more versatile, high resolution dot matrix LCD screens than the other pre-computers, but they're more frivolous and suited for a younger audience, even though the advertised age range overlaps a little. It would take the power pad to combine the best of both worlds. Here we've got that familiar wobbly pre-computer keyboard, pre-computer basic, but also a whopping four lines to go with it. It's still a very text-based experience compared to the dot matrix graphical abilities of the notebooks, but two extra rows of screen space are a welcome addition for any budding programmer. Interestingly, the system still waits for you to press return after a single line of output rather than four, as you'd imagine, so we've still got a lot of programming hanging over from the 1000 days nestled in here. However, we also have some new programs, like Story Problems. But the problem isn't the story, it's the fact that you have to write 400G as the answer, rather than 400 grams, but then in the next question you have to write grams rather than G. What the hell? Maybe some consistency would be useful here. I quite like the bezel on this one though, not too overstated. But here's where things really start to change. You might have thought that VTech machines just stayed the same throughout the years. Well, that's true in some respects, but just look at this. We've got a 9-pin serial port, 25-pin parallel, and some kind of RJ45 port on the back. And check out this translucent plastic aesthetic. Yeah, that's where it's at. It even comes with its own mouse, which strangely plugs into that RJ45 style port, and you've got a mouse pad too. I'm not entirely sold on the shocking bezel, but let's crack on anyway. Look at that, the mouse actually has a proper pointer, and if you want you can use the trackpad, although it's a resistive sensor, so it does require quite a bit of force. The mouse is easier to use, although the DPI leaves something to be desired. Still, it's pretty impressive for this limited LCD setup. Talking about the LCD, it is incredibly difficult to work out what's going on unless you've got spot-on lighting. It reminds me of trying to play the Game Boy in a car in the 80s and trying to absorb as much street lighting as you possibly could. If the angle is off, you're not going to see much. So what's good? Well, we've got some PCM sound effects, we've got some shortcuts behind the keyboard, and we've got an art studio. It's even got a word processor and a so-called homework wizard, which allows you to put your own questions and answers in for self-testing, I guess. I mean, it's not really a wizard, more like a bridge troll, but at least there's a little bit of memory to save what you do. We've also got an array of games, including a first-person maze game, reminiscent of 3D Monster Maze on the ZX80. I mean, it's quite easy given you get the map. Oh, this is some um, seriously basic racing. The 3D version of Tic-Tac-Toe is also quite cool in a Star Trek chess type of way. It is my turn. It is your turn. And you also get lots of settings to tweak. And the best thing of all is Logo. Yes, this might not have a basic interpreter, but we've got a fully fledged implementation of the Logo programming language. Now, if only we had a floor turtle to instruct. If you've got an appropriate printer, you could print out your program listing or end result. I've actually got a VTEC thermal printer, but it's a generation behind this laptop, and so just isn't compatible. Which is a bit short-sighted by VTEC. Another optional extra is the VTEC modem. Paired with the email cartridge, you can actually hook this thing up to VTEC servers and send electronic mail. Of course, they don't work now, and I don't have the cartridge, but we've actually got a proprietary slab of LCD here, which almost resembles a real computer. It's not bad. 
It's even got a screensaver. I mean, where's that tiny car going? What's it doing? So many questions. At this point, I'm more than intrigued enough to take this one apart and see how things have evolved. Well, there's no Z80 processor anymore. Instead, we've got an unknown processor blobbed in place. I suspect it's probably a Sun Plus unit. You find lots of them in toys of this era. To the left, we've got a CMOS microcontroller, and to the right is two megabytes of CMOS flash ROM just next to a RAM chip, which I think is 256 kilobytes. The Talking WizKid Platinum is next, and this thing is really like a cut-down Endeavour aimed at a slightly younger audience, but it does have a whole extra on-screen colour. Alongside blue, we also have red, and actually it helps a lot with clarity. It's also got a fairly nice windowed interface, but Jesus Christ, it is mighty insistent on you deciding what program to choose and fast. Select an activity. Select an activity. Select an activity. Select an activity. Alright, Jesus Christ. Check out this word processor. It works. We might not be able to save anything without an expansion memory cartridge, but at least we can print to the VT25 thermal printer without issue. Can you imagine handing this bit of paper in for homework? <laughs> Okay, look, these bezels absolutely fascinate me. It's, it's such a permanent thing, trying to mimic a changing dynamic interface. I mean, who decides what goes on here? Extras? Charts? Mouse port? What's that about? If you've got a mouse, you know it has a mouse port, otherwise it's just a constant f*** you to the kids forced to use this navigational excuse. You're probably thinking, that's great, but how about something bigger, something more vulgar with its visual impact? Well, fear not. VTech have us covered. Hi, I'm Barry Scott, and I'm here with Jill. Select a mode. Introducing the desk station. You get the feeling that VTEC had an abundance of plastic laying around at this point, especially when you consider that a load of these computers were out at exactly the same time. Interestingly, a lot of them were the same underlying hardware, just with different aesthetics. Thankfully, the size of this one isn't gone to waste. Look, we've got an extra storage compartment for the mouse on the back, along with our seemingly now standard big boy connectors. And this keyboard is possibly the nicest so far. With everything set up, it looks... well, it looks like something. I mean, I especially love the fake hard drive light. What's it searching for? A purpose to go on? One particularly abhorrent feature is that musical ditties play in the background as you use it. Kind of like a background media player. But these are not tunes any sane human could ever bear to listen to. Honestly, it's no wonder kids annoy adults. Look at what we're putting them through. Not only that, but you can tell these tunes are consuming processing power, as whenever they play, your interaction is slowed to that of the British government taking action in a pandemic. Select an activity. Homework with it. This machine is again aimed at the seven-year-old. It's got a normal mode or an adventure mode on boot. Adventure mode is just a story involving lots of puzzles, whilst normal mode provides our standard VTech edutainment resources. Arrange the words in alphabetical order. Whilst we're knee-deep in all this learning, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you want to understand the laws that shape our world, or gain a deeper understanding of a subject which eludes you, then Brilliant is where it's at. 
Take this computer science course about writing programs. Here you're put in the position of a new employee of Amazoo Adaptive Systems and tasked with understanding and writing the programs required. Or how about putting your mind to some interactive logic solvables? There's an entire world to immerse yourself in and come out the other end better. It's like an online VTech machine, just a lot better. Go to brilliant.org slash nostalgia nerd to sign up for free. The first 200 people will also get 20% off premium annual membership. Okay, it's about now that things start to take a nosedive. Yes, the Millennium wasn't kind to VTech's children's range. This is where style really starts to take the lead over substance. Enter Vapor. It's a laptop with a built-in stylus which wangs up. But all its core componentry is housed in this removable PDA. Yeah, this thing can be used on the go because PDAs were all the rage back then. You'll need three AAA batteries, but without the keyboard, it's... God, it's just horrible to use. You can use these touch icons with the stylus, but it's really difficult to navigate anywhere or really do anything. It's not much better when it's plugged back in. Golf, anyone? The style pad tries to cross that bridge between tablet and laptop with horrific consequences. No, really. It sounds out of tune. Because now we're in the era where tablets were all the rage. Uh, this thing is... Uh, I, I don't... I, I, I can't... And then we're into the full colour screens. You know, we're getting to the point where actual proper technology for adults was as cheap as a VTech toy, so it kind of feels like they gave up for a while. We've got a tiny colour LCD screen, and we can learn about Stonehenge, or put some entries into a diary. But hey, at least we're down to just three AA batteries now. Look how far we've come. Opening this one up is quite painful, as components now tend to be stored in the screen section rather than the keyboard side, so it requires literally peeling the screen surround off. Once done, it reveals all these glorious components of old are now squeezed into a single Chinese ARM processor. And with that, the soul of the original machines was apparently also squeezed out. That's not to say that all VTech machines are now crap, their role has just changed to more of a novelty than a staple toy, whereas before they used to offer a genuine world of wonder, a stepping stone to an actual computer, now the lines are blurred. Kids are more likely to have an Android tablet incorporating exactly the same functionality as their parents' devices, rather than a vastly reduced wannabe. You might think that's better, but for me, the charm is now lost. The charm of having a bit of kit that was your own thing, that was limited to a crippling extent compared to a real computer, kind of forced you to understand how it worked, and in what ways it couldn't work. If I was to give this to my 10 year old now, he'd throw it in the bin and just crack on with his proper computer, blissfully unaware of what's going on behind the scenes, blissfully unaware of how many technological hurdles have been conquered to get where we are now. I guess that's what progress is all about, but it feels like we're losing something in the process. I just hope we don't lose it altogether. In the meantime, I guess we could always just use these for circuit bending. Oh, by the way, I haven't forgotten about machines like this, but then they require their own video. They're a bit more special. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great evening.